Yeah, uh, my name is Vinayak and uh, today I'll be talking about uh, Bluetooth Low Energy Controller in Zephyr. Um, I have like two parts to my presentation. Uh, but, um, the first half is going to be introduction, so it's going to be like uh, introduction to Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, what uh, it is uh, when I say it's uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, how it is uh, implemented uh, in terms of basically the technology as such, not anything to do with uh, the code. And the second half would be uh, um, the design or the architecture which I am currently working, uh, which is to improve on what is upstream already. Uh, so um, I'm not going to take uh, time explaining uh, the old uh, architecture, but the new one is uh, reusing most of what is there upstream and uh, what's going to come uh, in Zephyr. Uh, before I start, uh, may I ask uh, like how many of you here is uh, using Bluetooth Low Energy and then, uh, okay, and uh, how many of you actually develop uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, that is basically uh, uh, the host or controller or application or profiles, okay. So uh, since I see uh, that uh, most of them are users, uh, I guess the first half would be interesting for uh, them uh, to know what's happening um, underneath uh, uh, when I talk about Bluetooth uh, uh, low energy technology. Um, before that, I will just start with, uh, um, I was supposed to have a clicker, yes. Um, so uh, as I said, uh, introduction. So I've been uh, I've been developing Bluetooth both uh, BRADR and uh, and uh, low energy for uh, from the time um, uh, I have uh, like passed out of my university. Uh, I've, in between, I, uh, uh, in the beginning, I was also uh, doing a bit of uh, Windows applications and uh, ASP.NET and stuff like that. Uh, but what I am doing today is today uh, I'm, I'm primarily uh, uh, the, the active uh, contributing uh, uh, maintainer of the controller in, uh, in Zephyr, uh, prior to which and also uh, uh, as, as, as a consultant to Nordic, um, uh, I have been developing the in-house uh, Bluetooth stack uh, in Nordic for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, I have moved back to my hometown in Bangalore and I continue to be a consultant for uh, Nordic. Um, I will be a bit fast because uh, I'm, I'm already into my five minutes into my presentation so uh, I will probably go fast and I prefer to basically show demonstrations in the time I have. So uh, Bluetooth, what is it? It's basically short range, uh, low power, uh, personal area networking communication or something that, uh, that is between your watch and headset and your phone and uh, probably between your TV and, and your remote and so on. So it's like just a short range uh, communication stuff, right? Um, maybe up to 100 meters if, uh, uh, if you have 20 dB to, uh, TX power. Uh, it's in the 2.4 gigahertz uh, ISM band, uh, which is basically free to use. Um, and uh, the, the special interest group was formed in uh, 1998. Uh, it's over 20 years of Bluetooth uh, around you. And if you, if you have a scanner or a phone, if you just scan now, you might get over 200, 500 devices just around you sitting here, uh, which, which are advertising. And uh, probably all your uh, uh, car kits and, and uh, headsets receiving receiving calls and stuff is actually using uh, Bluetooth and Bluetooth, yeah, BD, uh, basic rate and enhanced data rate. So there's billions of products uh, shipped and uh, there's over 33,000 SIG members who are basically uh, contributing and using the specification. What is uh, Bluetooth low energy? Uh, it's ultra low power, so it's even lower power than the, the basic rate. Uh, it's optimized for short burst uh, data transmission which means that it's very small packets that's on air and uh, uh, very short RX and TX windows. Um, and uh, the, 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 the main idea was uh, raised to idle, which is basically you turn on the radio as seldom as possible and turn off the radio as soon as possible. Uh, with this, uh, you can actually uh, achieve like, like, uh, like a connection, transmit data and tie down within like six uh, milliseconds. So you a device can advertise and be scanned uh, by a second device and connected and transmit some minimum data and then tear down by six milliseconds. 
Um, it's um, when I started. It used to be before the profile uh, or the, the specification was adopted. It was called like a sensor profile, and it just mentioned about value, like a parameter and value. You, all that you wanted was this is the parameter, this is the value you want to transmit. So it is evolved. Uh, by the time it was adopted, uh, we basically had a, a layers of uh, the, uh, modules or components in, in the stack. So uh, it's, it, it, it's still uh, simple stateless operation stuff. So uh, uh, the, 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 the information is transmitted as a parameter and a value, uh, but you still have a lot of other uh, infrastructure around it. Um, and um, it was supposed to be a low memory footprint. So I think the thesis that, that introduced uh, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy Vibri basically mentioned that the whole implementation could be done in four kilobytes of ROM. Um, yeah, but that was then. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then um, uh, you should be achieving about uh, over a year of uh, coin cell battery. So it's like uh, CR 2032 um, um, cell. You should be achieving a, uh, a year or more of uh, battery life. So uh, moving on to the technology, what's underneath it, uh, the BLE stacks, uh, stack look um, uh, as, as shown here. So at the bottom, uh, you have the fee, which is basically the 2.4 gigahertz. And then um, there's the link layer, which, uh, which basically uh, implements the, the, uh, the roles and states uh, and uh, a standard host controller interface uh, specified in the specification which then uh, can be uh, used by, by host like Zafir host or BlueZ host to, to, uh, to basically uh, uh, achieve a connection with, uh, with a peer device and so on. And then uh, in, the, in the host, uh, you have the L2CAP, which is a logical link, and con uh, logical link control adaptation protocol, over which uh, uh, you have the attribute protocol, as I mentioned, uh, the, the, the parameter value uh, is actually uh, exchanged over attribute protocol. Um, uh, and then uh, for the security of the security manager uh, protocol and uh, gap is the generic access. So that is what is used to basically uh, recognize a device and establish a connection and so forth. Um, and the top is the profile. that. Profile is basically use, use, user uh, use cases and stuff like that. So hit over, GAT is used by your keyboard and mouse. Uh, proximity, uh, your proximity tags. Uh, of course, the keyboard and mouse will have batteries. So then you have a battery profile to exchange the battery level and so on and so forth. So there's temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, and, and yeah, now there's like tons of them. So on top of this, you have your unique application. Um, so how you, how you would uh, basically differentiate from your competitors. Um, on the BLE fee, as I mentioned, uh, uh, it shares uh, 2.4 gigahertz along with the BREDR. Uh, in BLE, you have uh, one megabit uh, symbol rate, uh, one, uh, uh, one mega symbol. Per second, uh, you also have two mega symbol per second signaling rate. Uh, the modulation is still um, uh, GFSK, uh, and um, the uh, you can uh, you, you you can have TX powers up to 20 dBm, um, and um, uh, compared to BREDR, which uses 80 channels, uh, BLE only uses uh, uh, 40 channels. Um, uh, and uh, and three of which is used for uh, it's used for advertising. Um, so uh, which means that uh, the the device that wants to be connected would would be advertising, and uh, the device which wants to connect to this one uh, is scanning on those three channels, and uh, those are the three channels on which you would establish uh, a connection. And uh, once the connection is uh, is uh, established. It happens on the on the on the thirty seven other data channels, and as you see, uh, uh, I have marked those uh, those advertising channels, and they are spread across so that uh, uh, there's uh, there's uh, they don't uh, basically interfere a lot with with the Wi-Fi um, channels. 
Um, on the link layer stuff, uh, the responsibility of link layer is to basically uh, maintain the, the advertising state, scanning state, um, and then uh, and be in slave or, or master role. Um, the legacy, uh, legacy advertising payload was up to 31 bytes. Uh, the, the external advertising now supports up to 255 bytes, plus you can chain them uh, to achieve uh, longer advertising packets. Um, but uh, the advertising extension would then be using the data channel, so they will, they will have a very small packet on the advertising channel, and then they will chain or continue with, 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 the, with the advertising data on the data channels. Uh, on the on the data channels, uh, the legacy uh, PDU size was 27 bytes. Uh, so, um, uh, but um, uh, with uh, with 4.1, 4.2, uh, uh, you you can actually have 255 byte uh, uh, payloads, PDU lengths, um, and uh, and uh, BLE has built an AES128 with uh, CCM. So, um, uh, so um, more, uh, all your uh, uh, data exchanged uh, would be would be encrypted. Okay. So uh, this is just a small animation of uh, what's happening uh, uh, with respect to advertising. So let's say we have a device A. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have a device A that's uh, that I didn't know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we have a device advertising at 20 milliseconds, and they are advertising on three channels uh, every 20 milliseconds, and. Uh, uh, we have a scanner which has a window of uh, 25 milliseconds, I think, and uh, and uh, it it scans on uh, channel 37, and then uh, and then um, and then um, has an interval of 50 milliseconds, so it then scans on 38. So uh, in the first scan window, uh, the scanning on Channel 37 is able to capture two packets, and um, the second window, uh, the channel 38, is able to see one of the advertisement on it, and the third one. So this this is what you would see uh, uh, on air happen when you have if you turn on your phone and scan for devices, uh, it will it will uh, it will receive packets in whenever it sees uh, the advertising on those channels. Um, the topology. Uh, a scanner, um, and then you have an advertiser. Advertiser is advertising. A scanner would be listening to the advertisement. The scanner, uh, if it is in the initiator role, would send a, a connect request packet to the advertiser, and then the the connection is established. Uh, uh, so so basically, a, a, a scanner becomes an initiator and becomes a master. Uh, a advertiser would become a, a peripheral if it is in a connectable advertising. So similarly, you can you can actually have uh, a master connect to uh, many slaves. If the master is also a BRADR device, it can then have a BRADR connection, uh, and you can also have uh, a scatternet scenario where uh, uh, the, the the slave can be another advertiser and be connected by another device. Yeah. Um, how does the connection look like? So uh, once uh, the connect request has been sent, uh, the connect request will contain um, an offset uh, from the time uh, the connect request was sent, uh, where uh, the master would transmit uh, with an access address, uh, which was also mentioned in the connect request. The slave is listening at that, that interval. Uh, once it uh, uh, receives a packet with the correct CRC, uh, it's going to basically uh, use um, uh, a small duration to uh, to turn around to be a be a transmitter. Uh, so that uh, that that uh, small amount of time uh, by specification uh, uh, is is uh, is fixed at like 150 microseconds, and it's called interframe space. So between RX and TX or TX and RX, you always have a 150 millise microsecond uh, space, and. Uh, if nothing is to is that to be transmitted between the slave and the master at that interval, then the radio quickly goes um, 
to idle. So uh, uh, a packet here, like 27 byte packet, it, it would consume like 328 microseconds, and then you have a 150 microsecond gap, and then another 27 byte, if, if received, would have uh, another 328 per microseconds. So uh, around 806 microseconds is what there is the, the transmission or use of radio there. And then the next interval, it will repeat the same. The master will start with the transmit, and uh, the slave receives it and transmit, uh, transmits its packet back. And if there are more packets, they keep continuing that with the 150 microsecond gap until the next connection interval, and they can keep on going on uh, as long as there's data. So, uh, so how do I show this uh, in, in, in Zephyr? So uh, uh, let's let me just. Uh, I have I have my boards here. I have two Nordic semiconductor development kit. I have the latest uh, 50 to 840 uh, chips, and I also have the 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 uh, 52 uh, 832, which uh, which I have connected to the power profile kit. So I can um, I hopefully will be able to show uh, uh, whatever I showed you in this graphics. I should be able to show it uh, natively on Zephyr because I have the GPIO debug enabled and upstream. If you enable them, uh, you will be able to use any logic, uh, uh, like an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer to see what I showed in this graphics here. So let me see if. Um, let's go to capture. So before that, um, it's also important I show what I'm doing. So, all right. Uh, the problem is I, I don't know. I don't see what I'm doing. <laughs> right. So uh, typically, um, the, the, the make menu config has uh, a section for Bluetooth. Sorry, could you make that yeah. bigger? Uh, let me see, how can I do that? View. Is there a bigger? bigger. I'm seeing it. Was it, what was the key combination there? One more. Control plus. Command plus. Command plus. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So then uh, there's a section for Bluetooth, and you just uh, go down. Yeah. So uh, in, in the uh, Bluetooth link layer, there's, uh, uh, of course, I'm having the, 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 the source base which I'm working now on the new architecture. So the old one uh, is available as a software-based uh, BLE link layer. And, uh, and then um, the new one is uh, basically, uh, the architecture is now split into uh, two different layers in the implementation. Uh, I will come to it uh, why it is that way. And, um, what I would usually do is I would go down and there's something called uh, Bluetooth controller debug pins. There's also a uh, profile radio ISR which basically prints how much uh, CPU time is utilized uh, by the controller in, in its radio ISR. Uh, but usually uh, this should be sufficient to, uh, to enable the GPIO toggling and uh, use a logic analyzer and measure how much of, uh, of CPU time is utilized uh, by the controller implementation. So. Uh, so it's it's already built. Um, I don't know which one is peripheral, uh, but uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see if things are working fine. Just okay. All right. So. So I already have a connection. So let me just uh, start capturing this. And uh, um, 
I will reset one of the board and I will reset the other board. So I have a master, a master uh, I have a master and I have a, a, a slave or a peripheral. So when I reset, uh, one of the board is, is advertising and the second board uh, is scanning for it as soon as it finds the, the heart rate uh, uh, profile uh, in the advertiser, it's going to establish connection. So it should have already happened as I said. Um, let's stop this. Uh, so if you see all this break here, that's where I press the reset button. Um, right. And uh, this is where the scanning is happening. Since I already had a connection, the connection needs to have a supervision timeout before it starts advertising. So, uh, so this was a previous connection where I, I, I kind of like reset one of the board. And um, the, this, the, the, the other board was not reset, so it continued to like uh, get, uh, go into supervision timeout. This is where the, the, uh, the slave um, wait a second. Um, yeah. So, so this is where um, the actual chip startup and there's advertising going on. Um, so there's advertising and there's scanning. So there was no advertising that coincides with the scanning here. So it appears like this is where uh, the, the advertiser was, was discovered by the scanner. And, uh, and then um, from this angle, I can't make out, but yeah, so. This, uh, this is the initiator here. So this is the place where uh, the, 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 the connect request was sent by the initiator and this is the first, uh, first EU connection event and uh, henceforth you, you have the connection events where the, the RX and TX uh, are being exchanged here. So these are the radio interrupts. And uh, if I zoom in then you should be able to measure like uh, the amount of time it takes uh, or the CPU time used to uh, uh, used by the controller uh, for the radio ISRs. So that was. Um, right. So. Right. So this is just the uh, stuff. So going to the controller. Um, so the controller was contributed in 2016, and uh, since then uh, uh, I've been basically running it through the conformance tester, and and uh, uh, because the, the 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 conformance tests also, uh, which is defined by by the Bluetooth SIG, uh, undergo basically enhancements and and fixes to them. Uh, so, uh, so I had to basically catch up with the with the conformance tests and uh, and uh, run through all the conformance tests for Bluetooth five specification. And uh, it was uh, it, 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 we basically got a design listing for it for our uh, DK uh, the development kit uh, in uh, in October two thousand seventeen. So what you have now on on the on the on the upstream uh, Zephyr is actually a qualified uh, design. Uh, for the controller component. Uh, what it has is uh, it's fully uh, 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 BLE 5.0 compliant. Uh, uh, it has unlimited uh, roles and connection count. What that means is that is uh, uh, the RAM permitted, you can actually, uh, I think uh, we have set a, 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 a upper limit of like 64 uh, as a count in the, in the, in the KCONF. But uh, if, uh, if you, uh, you could you could go more than that also if you want, um, and uh, it, it's only restricted by the RAM. Um, 
it also supports concurrent multi protocol ready um, and it has uh, intelligent scheduling of roles so if you if you if you have uh, a device that wants to establish 8 or 16 uh, master, uh, uh, as a master connect to 16 peripherals uh, the scheduling is going to arrange them in an order such that these these connection events don't overlap so so it establishes connections uh, 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 equally spaced in time and also if you do a connection parameter update it's going to find a non overlapping offset and then uh, and then uh, maintain the connection there and uh, also as a slave if if a single device is uh, is uh, 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 is a slave to more than uh, more than uh, two uh, masters, and uh, since the slaves uh, depend on the the master clock, and they would drift into each other, uh, the current implementation on the on the on the uh, upstream master is able to detect that, and then do an auto connection update to move them in in a non overlapping uh, 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 intervals. It's uh, also uh, the design is. I uh, yeah, I just say it's portable, but since there is only Nordic chip there, but uh, yeah, it's open for other uh, other uh, vendor silicons uh, uh, to implement the hardware abstraction layers. Okay, um, how does the architecture look of the controller? So at the bottom you have the the SOC. Um, there is a, a barebone uh, hardware abstraction layer. Uh, earlier in 2016, most of most of the the hardware in the SOC was uh, accessed using the hardware abstraction layer. But the goal is to move or uh, delete, remove the the hardware abstraction layer and use native uh, uh, Zephyr drivers from uh, from the controller code. So uh, above the hardware access uh, abstraction layer, we have something called a ticker, which is responsible for this periodic. Uh, scheduling of the, 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 the advertiser scanner and uh, and uh, the connection uh, roles. Utility is uh, bare bone uh, uh, implementations of queues and uh, and FIFOs um, and uh, and uh, a very very lightweight memory management. Uh, it also com has uh, a small module that have developed called Mayfly, and the idea behind is basically race to idle. So it's just uh, just a way of executing functions. Um, Across interrupt uh, inter priorities, the link layer is uh, is the the the, the, the core uh, implementation of the the, the packet uh, packet transmission and and control packets and stuff like that. Um, above which is the HCI, and then you have the host, uh, Zephyr host, um, and and application. Right. Um, the goal is uh, for the new architecture the, uh, is to have a multi-vendor uh, uh, multi-vendor support, which means that uh, which, uh, uh, that uh, vendors would like to basically uh, add in their uh, BLE support at various layers in the, in the controller. So uh, so the the split is such that if if vendors want to basically have their own packet uh, management. In, in uh, let's say it could be in their silicon or it could be in, in a binary blob or so, the new architecture would permit them to, the, to, to basically reuse uh, probably a mature implementation they, that they already have. So like in the previous presentation, they said that they have a co-poster and then they have softwares in it, which, is, which they have been using for many years and uh, probably they, 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 they continue to uh, uh, use it because of it being mature. So the new architecture would permit uh, vendors to basically uh, replace uh, at various layers in the control uh, in the in the controller uh, uh, the mod uh, replace the modules and add in. So here uh, on the top, uh, it's it's the application, then the host, which is both uh, uh, Zephyr threads, and then uh, there is an upper link layer, uh, which is going to be open source. Uh, and uh, it's a, it would it would be have all the control procedures and scheduling uh, of the of the events, radio events, and and so forth. Um, and then um, there's a split. Uh, you have the lower link layer. Uh, in case of Nordic, it would be open source. Uh, the lower link layer is nothing but the radio access, um, how the, the 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 TX and RX and the the packet uh, uh, being exchanged between the two devices. 
and then there is the the hardware which is basically uh, in the SOC and um, um, yeah the vendors could choose uh, to 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 reuse the lower link layer if they want uh, then they would just have to abstract the hardware interface or they could just uh, just utilize the API uh, between the the upper link layer and lower link layer which is uh, uh, I can um, in, the, in, in the in the in the coming in, in the next slides I can show what those are right um, mayfly so uh, if I go back so there is a mention of task led there, uh, but actually uh, uh, it was uh, it was a goal that probably we will have something equivalent in Zephyr that could be used in the controller to execute uh, race to idle uh, uh, functions and so on. So uh, until then, um, uh, we do have something, but I haven't ported it yet to the to the native uh, implementation in in Zephyr yet. Until then, uh, there's there's a small implementation in the controller which basically. Uh, is uh, is is something uh, like like a like a uh, like a work. So if you have a thread in Zephyr, you could have a work which which is executed by a work queue. So what is a Mayfly? Mayfly is similar to a work work in thread, but it's basically scheduled by an ISR and executed in an ISR. So uh, I try to represent that in 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 the diagram there. So you have callers and callee, and all of these are uh, either thread or ISRs. And uh, a caller would, would request uh, to schedule a function. It's just a normal C function. Uh, and uh, would request that to be scheduled in an ISR at, 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 at the priority it wants it to be executed. So uh, each, each uh, ISR has a queue of functions uh, to which the caller would, uh, would uh, enqueue it and then, um, and then uh, trigger the, the IR queue to uh, basically process those functions. Uh, this was something that I had hand drawn like way back in 2012. Uh, how I actually vision um, the, the the controller to behave uh, with respect to handling the radio. So at the bottom there is a thread. Uh, the T represents the thread. So thread is going to basically make some API calls, and there is going to be a level of uh, execution there uh, where. Uh, uh, where basically uh, like a job that would, uh, would would basically do the do the scheduling stuff, and then have a higher priority context that uh, that would uh, would uh, basically access the hardware and uh, set up the radio and so on. I, I don't want to go into the detail. The topmost is uh, basically the counter compare registers firing. Uh, by, uh, as a consequence of uh, the setup done by the job. And then there's a radio interrupts happening um, uh, as you receive and transmit the packets. Um, so what's happening on the scheduling uh, in the new architecture? Uh, you can see the bigger blocks are the, the execution context. There's host, and um, in the center you have the upper link layer, and then on the, on the rightmost side you have the lower, lower link layer. Uh, when you want to start advertising, then uh, the 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 API is uh, API from the from the application would then translate into HCI. The HCI would then um, uh, okay. So uh, so this is the HCI. HCI would then call the the link layer interface to prepare a a, a scheduling uh, message that's placed into. Uh, a queue here, the the upper link layer would then uh, uh, set up the the counter compare registers. Uh, when the comp compare uh, uh, triggers, then uh, the the requests are then placed into a pipeline because you could have overlapping schedules. They will then be placed in a pipeline and and process, and then uh, and then um, they would uh, basically. Uh, schedule the preparation for the radio event in the lower link layer. Once the, the radio event is finished, which is basically to do the placket uh, transmission and reception, there would be a message sent back to the, the upper link layer saying that that particular event is finished. Uh, the upper link layer would then look into the pipeline to see if any other overlapping uh, events are there very uh, uh, back to back or very close. 
then it's going to basically uh, run the lower link layer again. Um, on the TX path, uh, again, uh, there would be a HCI uh, command, uh, which then goes into a, a fixed uh, size, fixed length uh, FIFO. That's because in the HCI you have like a read buffer size. Uh, if you say, for example, 10 TX buffers, then the 10 is going to be shared across, uh, across your uh, connections. So all that is needed is just a fixed length of FIFO for the TX. But then once it's, uh, once it's received by the upper link layer, it's demultiplexed into connections. So if you have 10 connections and you had 10 TX packets, each one for those connections, then they, they, they are basically uh, demultiplexed into those connection contexts. And when a, a connection event occurs, only that, per, that, uh, that packet is utilized by that event transmitted, and then comes back in a, in a, uh, in a FIFO here because, um, uh, uh, because the num completes uh, uh, would, 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 would at max be 10 because that, that's what was, uh, was configured in, in Zephyr that you would like 10 TX buffers, okay? And uh, there's a FIFO here, there's a FIFO here. So the only difference is uh, there's a FIFO bit going downstream, but then demultiplexed into, into context stay, uh, safe uh, queues. And then there's a FIFO back uh, receiving the, num uh, the number of uh, completed packets down to the uh, host thread. Yeah, that's on uh, the TX part. And, uh, Yes, uh, on the RX path, um, the host thread will always um, fill up a, a free um, a FIFO with, uh, with uh, free buffers, which would be picked up by the radio events. And then uh, the, uh, the received packet is then sent down to the upper link layer, which would parse it to see if they are data packet or control packet. If they control packet, then they will they will have a special processing being done. Uh, if it is data packet, then it would be sent to the to the HCI layer and then host. Okay. So um, I I would like to show. Um, I just have the power profile kit, so I can show you the the power profile. Uh, but before that. Um, I already have some screenshots of how it looked, uh, how it looks upstream, with respect to the the, the architecture there. Um, so at the top is basically uh, a zoomed out uh, uh, power profile stuff where it's doing uh, continuous scanning, but uh, you can clearly see that uh, there is a lot more. Uh, CPU idle between channels. So these are like 37, 38, 39, 37, 38, 39. But then, um, then there's the, the multi-role where you also have advertising while scanning. Uh, as you see here, the, the advertising actually utilizes one whole, or uh, is basically uh, uh, replaced a scan, uh, scan window here to do the advertising. And then the scan, uh, in, in the next scan interval is when the scan uh, scanning is happening, but uh, with the new work which I am doing, uh, the the scanning basically utilizes very little time to switch uh, channels. So you, you you it's like from 70 uh, 70 micro 70 to 300 microseconds to uh, to switch the channel to do the scanning, and uh, and advertising uh, at the same time uh, is is basically uh, pipelined here. So and has a resume. So as soon as uh, the advertising uh, is finished, the the scanning continues uh, back to back with uh, with the with the with, uh, after the advertising. So this means that uh, uh, the 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 radio utilization is uh, is higher in the new architecture compared to the old one. So uh, these are just the points uh, like continuous events for continuous scanning and direct advertising are truly continuous. So, okay. 
I will probably just take another two or three minutes to show if I can. Let's see. So uh, I have this uh, tool from Nordic Semiconductor, uh, which has the power profile, which apparently opened up in this window again. So let's go up here. Okay, I will need to. It's not turning rating yet, so let's see. Okay. Yeah, I'll just give a last try and then. Uh, okay. No. Yeah, it's probably uh, I must be having some wrong firmware there. So. Um, Basically, it's just going to have, uh, it's going to display whatever I displayed over there in terms of uh, the power profile. We believe, uh, hmm? we believe you. Uh, yeah, because I have taken the screenshot, so. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I, I guess uh, if you have some quick questions, I can answer. Or I'm always available on IRC, and you should be able to send me an email. Anything related to Bluetooth, I will usually look at uh, in the Zafir uh, mailing list. So the uh, the new link layer that you uh, presented, the new architecture, lives in a private branch right now um, because yes. of certain other uh, items that we're not going to discuss here. But when do you expect uh, at least the first bits of it being merged upstream so that we can uh, actually see this? Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm still porting all the control procedures. That's the, the remaining part of it, uh, which uh, I uh, promised myself that it should be like three weeks, but uh, I also look uh, handle uh, uh, bugs and uh, requests on the on the mailing list. So uh, yes, so that's what is uh, consuming my, my time. But uh, uh, I would I would say that yeah, sometime in in three weeks. But uh, this private branch also is you used to develop. Uh, Bluetooth features, the future uh, Bluetooth features. So uh, SIG members uh, uh, would be given access to to all the all the new work being done. But whatever is adopted, th those will always be merged back uh, upstream. So uh, the the Bluetooth five features, uh, once I'm done with porting all the control procedures, should be along with the new architecture available upstream. While uh, uh, while the new features would be developed in the in the in the private repository, and it but it's 
it's it's not private as such. It's it's open for all the Bluetooth SIG members because of the Bluetooth confidentiality stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, thank you. Thank you.